Um, I'm using a German uh, software co called uh, Cubase. Wow. Uh, so it's very renowned in uh, in in Europe in general. Uh, I know um, uh, American people use more Pro Tools and Logic because a lot of people in America have Mac and Logic uh, is Logic Pro is uh, uh, built in or you, you can get it for free or for 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 cheap on on Mac computers. Um, so yeah, that's a good, very good option to use if you have if you have a Mac. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, in in Europe, Cubase is uh, is very uh, widely used, and I use this one. So now they are at version eleven, and yeah, that works very good. So I do everything in that software. So composition, so songwriting, let's say uh, everything from virtual instruments to. Uh, uh, real instruments recording like vocals, hammered dulcimer, harp, uh, etc., guitars, and uh, mixing as well. So everything is uh, is accessible uh, for mixing. Uh, mastering, I can do that, and I do that for uh, let's say projects that are not my own. But I know that for my own albums and projects, I prefer for the very last step of. Um, of yeah, music production for mastering, I prefer to give it to someone else. I can, I have the tools to do it, but I want someone else to hear the music and just say, okay, this needs a bit of balance. So that the thing I outsource for my my own music. But yeah, I everything now nowadays we are very lucky because with one computer and. A few uh, software that go in a range from 100 to a few hundred uh, euro or dollars, you can easily uh, do all the production steps uh, on on your own. Wow! What whatever software you are using, there are several big softwares. If you're on a Mac, Logic Pro is definitely uh, it's very ergonomic. Uh, I used it several times, and the ergonomy is. Uh, quite uh, comparable to the one uh, I'm using so it's it's fairly uh, fairly accessible I mean uh, watching maybe a few tutor tutorials on YouTube um, yeah. otherwise I can give lessons for that but yeah I think most of the people for the very basic stuff uh, like just records uh, re stereo tracks can 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 do uh, with watching tutorials and uh, that kind of things so you can see that this, for instance, is the virtual drum. Uh, hop. As you can see, there is wow. the drum kit. So I programmed that things here. As you can see, these are, these are the this is a, uh, programming window. So it has a kind of piano roll on the side. And here you have whatever time division you want. So one eighth, uh, one sixteenth. And you can see that the grid adapts accordingly. And for instance, all the instruments are there. So that's the funny part because I just stay in my chair and work with my uh, mouse and keyboard and just uh, make the, that uh, things. And same for a bass line. So you have the drum, which is here. Bass line. Oh, you, you can see I articulated also the, uh, the crash. You see this uh, kind of uh, uh, square shape here. Uh, it's autom automating of the um, uh, crash choke. So as you can see, uh -huh. the crash in the free state, it resonates very long and it uh -huh. decays uh, naturally, but uh, you can program the choke uh, of the cymbal. So that's very... Wow. <laughs> yep. yep. Well, that's beautiful. And then uh, there are guitars. So I used... Uh, that kind of things. And Dulcimer is here. So let's listen to it alone. So 
So if we have a closer look at the audio track, this, so this is what we call the, the waveform. And you can see two waveforms, one on top, one on bottom. So this one is a left and this one is a right channel. So basically this is what has been recorded by the left microphone and this by the right microphone. And yeah, you can, you can see some, um, some of the, let's say, usual shape of uh, dulcimer recording. So this is a dulcimer note that is recorded. And you can see um, an intense uh, burst of, uh, of level, uh, which corresponds to the, to the attack when the hammer strikes. And this behind, this section corresponds to the sustain. So when the, when the note rings. And yeah, uh, by having a look at these two left and right channels, you can see that they are slightly different. So that's because it was two different mics located at two different places. And that's these differences between both that, that makes stereo so, <clears throat> so large and enveloping. And now let's have a look at another technique uh, I use a lot. It's a mixing technique, which is called the volume tracking. So volume tracking consists of um, following the level of uh, a track of, of an instrument along the tune. And the aim is to make it have an, a consistent level depending on what part is playing. Maybe a good example is this one, this section. You can see that the dulcimer recording is very small and that indicates it has been played very quietly. Uh, in opposition, the next part here, uh, it's the waveform is, is, is large and that's because um, it's been recorded louder. The reason is that this has been plucked and this has been struck with hammers. And in order to balance a little bit this, in order to make the dulcimer still stand out, even when it's very quiet, you can see that I artificially increased, boosted the level along this part. And then when the hammer hits come back, there is some kind of decreasing slope and then the volume has changed. So if we hear the transition, you could hear that the dulcimer still stands out, is still audible even when I played it quieter. So this is a, a, a kind of technique that is very commonly used to emphasize the dynamics and make an instrument stand out in the in the mix.